Uh, well, Josh, thanks for helping my project. No problem. Um, so can you say a little bit about yourself? Okay, well, I'm Josh Bryce. I'm from Beaumont, Texas. Oh. I'm in real estate. Oh, fantastic. So I buy and sell houses. Um, that's really about it, about me, unless you have anything you'd like oh, well, to know Oh, well, you know, about. I went to elementary school in Beaumont. I oh, went really? to Roy Guest Elementary. Okay. I don't know if you're... Did my you... buddy went to Roy Guest. Okay. I was in All Saints. Okay. That's the only Beaumont school I know is Roy Guest, just because I happen to go there. <laughs> okay. But then I went to Orangefield, and that's where I grew yeah. up, so... Okay. Uh, kind of that area. But uh, that's great. I used to be in residential real estate, too. Really? Yeah, it's quite a demanding profession. It is. Uh, people are very demanding. It takes like, up a lot of time. I am in front of this house, and uh, can you show it to me? And you're like, well, I was doing something else, but and then if you say no, then like just down to the next person on the list. It's like, yep. oh. oh yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. It takes a lot of time. I mean, I work weekends, nights, early mornings. I know. It's uh, uh, so. How do you get your leads? I get my leads by Facebook. Um, people contact me constantly. I'm in a lot of groups where people will contact me. For the leads like, hey i got this house for sale here or i got this deal here what do you think and so pretty much everybody brings me the deals i don't have to go out and find anything you are a very blessed person um it's <laughs> taken a lot of time four years in the making so. that that is awesome i think it only lasts about a year and a half so really <laughs> yeah so may, maybe the breakthrough point was sometime after that <laughs> it took a long time so the first like year and a half was the hardest part especially transitioning from doing everything ourselves to having help and getting more people involved and more investors and all that oh wow so the first year and a half was real tough and it happened right after harvey so mind you i lost my house my two vehicles oh and everything gosh. too so i was starting from scratch and i quit my job right before harvey hit to start <laughs> real estate so yeah it was it was tough you're like inventory went down demand went up mm -hmm. and uh you know the there's so many people here competing with me yeah. oh yeah a lot of people because you know houses got flooded so people were coming out buying and scooping up houses left and right and we did the same thing which is good but it like i said it was hard and took a lot of time that, that's amazing well i'm glad you stuck with it uh, are you a broker or are you still an agent no i'm not i'm neither i work for my own company i oh, buy okay. and sell houses under my own company oh so you're just like an investor yes oh, okay Correct. yeah no i was a real estate agent so okay. you know the residential real estate and gotcha. you know so doing housing uh, listings mm -hmm. and showings and mm -hmm. closings and all that good okay. stuff so yeah it's a lot of stuff we do is residential now i do have one commercial building that was office space mm -hmm. and it got damaged in laura so now we're turning it from office space to apartments that we're in a zone where we can do apartments okay so everything we're getting rid of office because you know covid hit and everybody with office space so you know they couldn't go to their office everything was closed down people were working from home so our inventory for office space nobody wanted it mm -hmm. because of covid yeah i know it's just like uh, almost infinite amount of office space available zero demand for it yep, mm -hmm. zero demand so everybody started working from home and a lot of people still are mm -hmm. so we're like okay well everybody needs a place to live that's right mm -hmm. I, you, you might see like uh, downtown houston these big tall office buildings become like condominiums or something <laughs> that would be crazy but yeah i could totally see it <laughs> A little short on bathrooms and, and uh, that type of thing, but uh, that'd be cool. Um, but okay, well, anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, did you know that NASA is planning to send people back to the moon? I did not know that. And uh, what do you think? Well, I think that's great. I mean, there's a lot of unexplored potential up there, right? So who knows where it might take them. Mm, uh, do you envision like a day whenever like humanity like branches beyond the earth and oh. there's like people living like on the moon or Mars and like these huge space facilities and all that good stuff so i grew up with a lot of science fiction right and you see on tv you know colonies on mars or the moon right. and all this and then <clears> they started coming to real like people started actually doing these things going to the moon and planning to go to the mars trip so when I, when I was a kid i did a project about the moon what they were actually like, were planning on colonizing you know putting base up there and having people live up there and we did a whole project about it so when I was a little kid, that was a dream of mine, was to actually go to the moon and go to space and be able to, you know, explore. So I can envision it, definitely. Now, what I want to do it nowadays, probably not. It's a little too dangerous for me, but that's great for, you know, NASA is getting back to the moon. Uh, they haven't been in the moon, what, how, how long has it been? 1972. 1972. 1972. My goodness. I know. So do you know why they stopped? I mean, uh, well, it was expensive, like uh, yeah. close to like a billion and a half per flight. And, uh, you know, you had the Vietnam War coming. Uh, you had, like, the, the Soviets uh, were kind of, like, bracing them. They, they put the first uh, satellite in orbit, the, the first uh, living thing in orbit, the first person in orbit, the first, 
uh, picture of the earth from space. You know, they were like doing all these first, right? And people were like, right. oh my gosh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are we doing? So then we're like, hey, we can't be doing a, a sprint, but let's try the marathon. <laughs> gotcha. That and then sense. once they got there, you know, most people were like, well, you made it. <laughs> did make it so why why, why are we going <laughs> hey there might be you know materials raw materials that we could use up there. i mean they could make a space station start colonizing people and fuel stations for like okay mars trips you know and stop there for fuel or food and all that too so that, yeah plus i mean the view would be great the view would be great yeah, no, you imagine like, a condo on on the moon right yeah <laughs> you're like looking at the the earth you're like hmm. that'd be pretty cool <laughs> yeah always have that in the middle of your sky you know or, or wherever mm -hmm. uh so if it was safe and affordable uh would you go to space feel safe and affordable definitely uh, i would love to see space and like are you talking about like a suborbital trip like where you just go up and come down or like in orbit for a few days or maybe to the moon for a week or would you consider immigrating to mars so i wouldn't immigrate to mars <laughs> i like my feet right here but i would definitely at least do a day trip you know go and come back that'd be great for me. That'd, uh, well cool well i really appreciate your time uh, did you have any questions for me or anything uh, you think might be of interest to people who are born 100 years from now <laughs> <laughs> nothing as of now but it was great and i appreciate the, the, the chat okay thank you so much